Hello YouTube, welcome back to another video. This is Champion 2D Rub back again and um, bit of an unexpected vid this. I wasn't necessarily planning on doing a response vid. Uh, I was planning on doing a pickups video but uh, I'm just waiting for uh, I think one more game to arrive before I do that. It's going to be a really good pickups video actually. It's going to all be retro uh, which makes a change. Um, but yeah, so um, I'm excited to show that one actually, uh, but uh, yeah, so that's going to be a bit of a wait So uh, yes, this was a bit of a, a bit of a surprise tag. I was tagged by a, a lad up north I will leave a link to his video below Very cool youtuber, uh, a guy who's pretty new on the scene um, Please check him out guys actually, he's a uh, He's he's only really just started and uh, he's he's got less than thirty subs, guys. So let's, let's you know check out his video um, and give him some subs, give him some, give him some support, guys. Come on, especially you Northerners, because uh, he's one of, he's one of you. So uh, <laughs> give him some support. But uh, yeah, so um, uh, basically, uh, I, I I didn't get his I don't know his name. I don't never got his name, but yeah, a lad up north. Um, he did a video uh, basically asking, uh, showing his uh, five most nostalgic PlayStation 1 titles. And uh, he tagged me, and uh, so I am responding. So yeah, uh, well, let's just start for a second with the PlayStation here. Um, I got into the PlayStation sort of early 95. And uh, yeah, do you know what? Like, it was a system that I was unsure of at first i mean like a lot of people like we didn't know what to expect with playstation you know uh, sony were a, uh, a new a new gaming company uh, you know it's their first console no one really knew what to expect um you know could it easily have gone the way of the 3do or the atari jaguar you know so like there was a for me anyway there was a bit of nervousness sort of jumping into playstation um because i, I was kind of like annoyed with sort of Sega and the way they handled their previous sort of add-ons and stuff so the Saturn for me while I did consider it at the time um, I just kind of didn't feel confident in making that purchase so I went with PlayStation and uh, you know what it wound up being a fantastic system and I do hold a whole load of nostalgic memories for it and uh, so we're going to go over here with a few games so a lad up north uh, suggested we do five titles that um, that are nostalgic to us, but it was very difficult to bring it down to just five. So I'm going to include two honourable mentions as well. And uh, as we go through them, you know, I'll talk a little bit about them and in terms of my nostalgic memories. And and uh, yeah, we'll leave it there. So anyway, the first game I'm going to say this is an honourable mention. And that is uh, Rival Schools. Yeah, this is my original copy from when I was young. And uh, uh, the reason why this is so nostalgic for me is because prior to this game coming out, I actually used to play this in the arcades. It was actually probably the, the first or maybe the second. Actually, no, it's the second 3D beat-em-up that kind of convinced me to invest in sort of 3D fighters because I should explain that in the 90s uh, during the PS1 era uh, I was not a fan of 3D games I, I wasn't like 3D platformers like did nothing for me like I, I, I wasn't a fan of them at all so I, I basically ignored 3D 3D platformers um, games like Clonora and Pandemonium don't count like I'm talking about proper 3D games so I basically skipped them that generation and I was a huge diehard 2D fighting fan at that time. So, but I kind of realized, you know, that the, the direction it was going, it was moving into 3D. And I didn't want to be that guy that, you know, just hates on something without really giving it a shot. So I, I did play a lot of 3D fighters in the arcades at that time. I played Virtual Fighter. I played Tekken. Um, I played loads of them, you know. And one of the games that did it for me at the time was uh, Dead or Alive, uh, the one that was actually based on uh, Sega hardware, not the one that came out on PlayStation, they actually had to remodel it, but that one was really good. But this one here, Rival Schools, 
was a big reason why I moved into, I accepted kind of 3D fires. Um, this one was so much fun. I used to play in the arcade so much. Um, it was such a great game. And I remember uh, following, when I found out it was going to get a PlayStation release, I was following it in um, official PlayStation magazine. And I bought this game day one. Um, I was so excited for it. And it did not disappoint. This was amazing. Um, two discs. So you've got like, like one disc is like the arcade game. And then the second disc is like a PlayStation enhanced version. It was a fantastic game. Great graphics. Very colourful. Great characters. Capcom was on point with this game. Like I kind of wish that Capcom would bring this series back. Um, I think it would work really well uh, today. Um, it's a shame they haven't. I know there was a sequel on the Dreamcast, which I was really gutted about, by the way. I remember seeing that, actually, back in the day, and uh, wishing why, like, why it was not on uh, PlayStation 2. Um, maybe I should have got a Dreamcast. But, um, yeah, really, really loved this game, and I hold a lot of fun memories because I used to play this so much back then. So this came out around very late 90s, this one, um, because I was working at the time when this came out, so it's probably 99, probably. But fantastic game, really did love this one. Second honorary mention has definitely got to go to Time Crisis. Now, I loud up North did bring this game up himself. It was also a very nostalgic title for him, and equally so for me. Very much like Rival Schools, this was a game that I played so much in the arcades before this came out. This is my original copy as well. I actually bought this with the gun and everything. I've still got the gun. The gun is here somewhere, but the, the box that it came in, unfortunately, is long gone. But uh, I was very excited for this release because I, I loved, loved that original arcade game. Um, I was initially disappointed by the release because the gun attachment itself uh, did not have a recoil function. And there was no pedal for, for the ducking. Um, but the, 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 the gun that did come with it, it worked fine enough. You used to press a button on the side of the gun and that would allow you to duck uh, duck for cover um, it wasn't quite the same but it worked well enough I, I know that later on uh, there was a third party company that did release a, a gun attachment and uh, and pedal but, but by that point I didn't care enough to to really to really invest in it um, it was enough for me that the, the gun that came with the with the game worked well and it was it was a very good port um, it was a very good port I'll, I'll give it that it was a lot of fun and I really did enjoy it. So, yeah, I mean, this game in Rival Schools really sort of takes me back to the arcades because uh, they were staples. These were staples that I played back then. Okay, so moving on to my five most nostalgic games. Um, I suppose there's no real point. I'm not going to do these in any order. I'll just show them as and when. So, first game, number five is Raiden Project and um, this is a title that back in the day I used to rent from Blockbuster so many times like I wasn't really into shooters back then I mean I didn't dis dislike them it was just wasn't really a genre I spent much time playing uh, in the prior generations um, the only one I can remember playing was uh, uh, Super R-Type which I really enjoyed oh and I think I played Trying to think on the Mega Drive. Did I play anything on the Mega Drive? I'm thinking Gynol, but I don't think I did play that. Maybe that came later. But uh, anyway, there was not a lot of shooters that I played back then. Um, so this was really, this was really the first one that I kind of put the time into. And me and my mate would rinse this game because there was a two-player co-op mode as well. I didn't know nothing about riding. I didn't know nothing about. Um, this series, this was my introduction to sort of the horizontal, sorry, the vertical uh, uh, shooters. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, fuck me, my mind's all over the place. I'm not concentrating. I'm a little bit tired, guys, so excuse me. But uh, yeah, it was um, it was a fantastic uh, title. I loved it, really did. Um, played it so much like honestly and I did actually consider I did actually consider uh, buying this game 
but I could never find it. Um, and I don't know what it was. I kind of got the impression this was like a rental only release. Which seems weird to think of at the time, but I don't know. Like I never, I never ever saw this game in the shops ever. In fact, it was only until years later, uh, while going through eBay, that I discovered you could actually buy a, a proper retail release because I could never find one. So yeah, great memories. Uh, me and my mate played this multiple, multiple times. Uh, next game I have to bring up here, and this game honestly blew me away because I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it was and uh, yeah it was fantastic I mean it's it's not aged very well now but it, it's definitely a game that in, in its time was just amazing and that is uh, Spider-Man very much like the current Spider-Man game on PS4 uh, this was a very very good game and uh, one that caught me completely by surprise by how good it was uh, I don't really know what to say about this game. It was just a fantastic 3D game. And this is coming... I mean, I should state that by this point, I was more accepting of 3D titles. Because most a lot of the games I was buying at the time were 2D games. I, I was buying 2D fighters, uh, 2D platformers. Uh, that was really what I was buying on the PlayStation. Didn't really take advantage of, of 3D. With the exception of racing games. Uh, until uh, Until sort of like after another title that I'm going to bring up in a second. But this was one that uh, really, really caught my attention and I was very impressed with it. And uh, I loved it so much. So yeah, that's uh, number four. Number three, and this is going to be Ray Tracers. And uh, this is another title along with um, The Raiden Project was another game I used to rent so much back in the day. If you're unfamiliar with Rage Tracers, it's it's basically um, uh, an arcade chase HQ kind of game. So the rather than just racing, your 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 goal is to is to smash your way through all these cars, and then at the very end you get to like a boss, and then you have to defeat the boss by charging into him. And uh, you've got a time limit as well to do it. It's a it's a super fast arcade racing game, battle game. And it was so much fun. I really did enjoy this game uh, back in the day. Again, like Raiden Project, like I could never see this. I could never find this game in the shops. And I enjoyed it so much. Like I rented it multiple times from Blockbuster. And, and just, I just loved it. I loved it. And, and again, you know, when I started sort of collecting for the PlayStation 1, uh, I went and got this as soon as I could. I actually forgot all about it for a while and then... I can't remember what it was. I sort of stumbled back onto it, and then it just the memories just came flooding back, and then I just made it my mission to get a copy. So yeah, really, really chuffed to get this one. I really, I highly recommend it as well if you don't have it. Okay, next title here, and this is going to come as a surprise to not to, a, to not a lot of people because I'm sure this game is also um, a game changer for a lot of people, and that is uh, Metal Gear Solid. This game, like, I remember following it on in the official PlayStation magazine, like following all the reports and all the articles they did on it. I was I was following the progress of this game because it just intrigued me so much. And um, I remember I this was actually the very first thing I ever pre-ordered was this game. I I and it, I didn't just get this game. I actually got like the the box set, the silver box set with the T-shirt. And the dog tags, which I think you can just about see here. Yeah, these are these are the dog the dog tags that came with it. This is my original copy. It came with a CD soundtrack. Yeah, and it came in a big silver box, and I and I um I pre-ordered it from uh, Electronics Boutique. I think it was still Electronics Boutique at this point. This would have been uh, 1998. I think I was working. I was working in um. In a clothing store in central London at the time and the electronic boutique was uh, just sort of across the road from it so I remember on my on my lunch break uh, going down there to, to pre-order it and then ultimately uh, picking it up and uh, when I finally got a chance to play this game like I was absolutely amazed by it it was fantastic loved it and um, it was the game that converted me it was the game that uh, introduced me to the cinematic um, 
uh, uh, cinematic game. You know, the games that I would go on to love in later generations, you know, with a heavy emphasis on story. And um, yeah, what a brilliant game. This was such an experience. Like, I will, I will definitely say this is one of the best games I've ever played in my life. Like, it's definitely in the top 10 all time favorite games. Um, yeah, it was such a game changer for me. Like, it was, it was just so different. I mean, I, I'm not going to go on about the little things that Hideo Kojima did in this game, you know, because there was a lot of like little novel, little gimmicks and, and stuff that you could do that could, that happens in this game. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was just such a game changer for me and, um, really opened my eyes to, to 3D cinematic storytelling. Yeah, amazing game. And finally, uh, this is the game that started it all for me. This was the game that uh, convinced me of um, of PlayStation. It was the game that sold me on PlayStation. It was the game that um, I just wanted to play. And, uh, you know, it, it, it was just such an incredible, incredible game. And what I'm talking about is Wipeout. Yeah, um, this was the very first game I bought for the playstation this is my original copy <laughs> i actually bought it used um but it was the first game that i bought for my playstation back in 95 and uh me and my mate rinsed this game i mean we got really good at it and this is the this is the original wipeout probably has the most unforgiving uh controls compared to the later games like they became a lot easier later on but uh i, I say easier they were never they never that they were never that easy but this one was unforgiving, but I, me and my mate got surprisingly good at this game because uh, we played it so much. It was it was amazing, fantastic game. The music was awesome. The levels was awesome. I mean, the graphics in this game at the time was just something else. Like I, it really was like it was next level. I mean, I mean like you look at today's systems, like jumping from PS3 to PS4, for example. Like I don't, I failed to see much of an improvement. I mean, I do see improvements, but they're not as evident to me at first. But the jump from 16-bit to 32-bit, especially when I saw this game, was... It was... it was Yeah, mind was blown. Fantastic game. Really was. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would say it, it's this one has since been beaten by its, by its, uh, its follow-ups. But um, it's just... The original game is just... It still stands up. It's still a fantastic game. The music was awesome. Graphics was was game changing at the time, and uh, yeah, it was just a really fun game. So that's it, guys. Those are my five or seven <laughs> most nostalgic PlayStation One games, guys. Um, let's let's continue this uh, 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 video response. I'd like to see loads and loads of of responses to this to this question. But uh, now, a lad up north, he never actually stated how many people I can tag. Um, I'm going to tag two people. I'm going to tag Gernaldinho, Gernaldinho Plays, Rob. I'm tagging you, mate, because I, I know you're into your PS1, so I want to see your collection. And I'm going to tag Craig, Super Quintendo. I'm going to tag you, mate, because uh, you were saying that I didn't tag you last time or people didn't tag you, so I'm tagging you now. Uh, I want to see your most nostalgic PlayStation 1 games. So anyway, guys, that is it. Until next time, I'll see you again. Bye-bye.